Praise the Lord. It's Wednesday night, April 22nd, family training hour time, and uh, we want to say thank you for welcoming us into your homes, over the laptop computers or Kindles or uh, through your cell phone. Thank you for welcoming us. And I trust maybe some boys and girls are watching this tonight. I just want to mention real quick to our children, to our families that have children, that Bernard Ridge has a Bernard Ridge Church of God Youth Facebook page. And on it is a special devotional by Sarah, Sarah Stevens. And also uh, Michaela has a devotional thing for our teens. So you'll want to look at that a little bit later. But right now, thank you for joining and I want to just say to our children that are listening tonight how important Jesus is to us. The Bible calls him the door of salvation. In fact, Jesus himself said, I am the door. If any man comes to the Father, that's God Almighty, they must come through me. There's no other door, no other way to heaven except through Jesus. And that's a good thing. Boys and girls... There's a game show that's been on TV for years where uh, there is a prize, is prizes of some kind or maybe nothing behind door number one, door number two, door number three. And people have to pick, they have to choose. And that's confusing. Aren't you glad that there's not a door number one, not a door number two, not a door number three, but there's only one door, only one, and it's Jesus. And when we accept Jesus, we walk through that door to the Father's house. And we're saved and we're ready for heaven. I'm going to sing this little song. I learned it many, many years ago in a Church of God youth camp when I was just a boy. And I know that's hard to believe. But yes, I was just a boy at one time. And so... Uh, I want to sing this song. One door, only one, but yet the sides are two. Inside and outside, on which side are you? One door and only one, yet the sides are two. I'm on the inside, on which side are you? Now that's an easy and a simple song. So why don't you ask your daddies and mommies to sing that with you. And by the way, when we get to I'm on the inside, I want you to holler it out. I'm on the inside. On which side are you? Ready? One door and only one. Yet the sides are two. Inside and outside, on which side are you? One door and only one, yet the sides are two. I'm on the inside, on which side are you? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your amazing grace. Lord, we thank you for coming down to this earth living a beautiful life before us, touching so many lives, giving us great words of wisdom. Lord, we read your words in the Gospels and how you spoke to our hearts, and you're still speaking tonight. And Lord, in just a moment, Brother Roger's going to come, and when he opens the Word, Lord, you are the living Word. Speak into our hearts. Bless our boys and girls. Bless our teenagers and moms and dads and families. And Lord, I pray that you would touch the hearts of that family member that doesn't know you as their personal Savior. May they walk through that door, Jesus, through you into the Father's house. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Roger, God bless you as you come and break the bread of life. Well, good evening. Once again, it's good to be coming to you by means of Facebook Live. I've, uh, 
I've titled a study tonight, <clears throat> Call Me. And when I gave it to the media people to put on the screen, I just noticed a few minutes after that that I had a missed call, and I didn't recognize the number right off, so I called it. And this man's voice said, you said call you. So it was one of the media people. You can figure out who that was, but, you know, it is so good to be with you tonight. And we thank you for the media people and what they do for us uh, and what we do without them. So we, we just appreciate them so much. So tonight I want to look at Jeremiah 33 and 3. Familiar passage of Scripture. I'm sure you've heard it before. It says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Matthew Henry, in his commentary, said those who expect to re receive comforts from God must call on Him. Promises are given not to do away with, but to quicken and encourage prayer. God wants us to communicate with Him. God wants us to call upon Him. One of the greatest invitations to pray ever given to anyone was spoken to, to Jeremiah. He was in prison for speaking the truth. God spoke to him in his distress and with, with both a command and an invitation. He was in prison for telling King Zedekiah exactly what God told him to tell him. But truthfully, it is a command. Call on me. <clears throat> God takes the initiative. Call unto me, Jesus said. Men always, always ought to pray. Paul said to pray without ceasing. And God says to Jeremiah, said, call me. Have you ever had an important person to give you a, a card with their unlisted phone number on it and say, call me? If someone very important gave you their private number, that's a great privilege. But what greater privilege it is for God to say, call me. You'll never get an answer machine. You'll never get a busy signal. There's an open line of communication always. In Jeremiah 32, uh, 17 through 19, it's Jeremiah's prayer. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth and by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompenseth the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name. Great in counsel and mighty in work, for thine eyes are open unto all the ways of the sons of man, to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So Jeremiah is praying to God. Jeremiah has actually bought a piece of property while he was in prison, and he was having second thoughts about it, but he was obedient to God because God had, had told him to do that. And just like Jeremiah, we have God's personal number. He gave his, his card and he said, there it is, and I want you to call me. There's not one of us who cannot contact heaven. Never in a situation, somebody say, there's nothing I can do, but you can pray. Every failure in our lives, when properly analyzed, is a prayer failure. That's not a single sin in our lives that proper prayer would not have avoided. Not a need prayer cannot meet. It's our greatest source of untapped power. Our spiritual lives will, will not rise above our prayer lives. We must learn to pray. When we don't, when we don't pray, we deny ourselves an incredible privilege. One of the most glorious prayer promises in the Bible is Jeremiah 33 and 3. The verse tells us how much the Lord is willing and waiting to do for his people if only they will come before him in, 
and humility and, and make known their request to him. How frequently we ask him for a little, when all the time he is inviting us to ask him for a lot. You know, there's really two sides to every prayer. Now think about that. There's two sides to every prayer. There's the human and the divine. There's man's side and there's God's side. <clears throat> We're not just praying words and they're just floating through the air. God has got an open line of communication that he hears and answers every prayer that we pray. So there's two sides to every prayer. There's the human, there's the man's side, and God's side. And this means, of course, that conditional, the answer to our prayer is conditional upon us praying. Matthew 18 and 19 says, Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So if we come together in agreement and we pray, God's going to answer that prayer. So let's look at man's side, the, the asking side of prayer. So what is man's part in prayer? Does it consist of some difficult and complicated process? Is there some formula that we have to learn, some ritual that we have to go through? Is it some intricate matter that it takes an expert to, to call on God? No. The simplest and most complete definition of the, the man side, the manward side, a prayer is contained in three little words. Call to me. Prayer is calling upon God, the, the creature calling upon the, the creator, the child petitioning the father. The three words tells us, tells us a lot about prayer. It tells us the source of prayer. Where does it begin? Does real prayer begin with the, with the prayer? Well, prayer begins with, with God. He takes the initiative, and by the Holy Spirit, he makes man the channel of the petition. Romans 8, 26 says that likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself making intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So even when we can't find words to put into prayer, God knows our heart, He knows our utterings, our groanings. He knows. And then there's the simple part of the prayer, the simplicity of it. Could anything be any simpler than call me? Psalms 50 and 15 says, And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. You know, I dare say that through this stressful time that we're going through now, and so many people sick, and people worried, I dare say there's been more prayers sent up in the last couple of months than there has in a while. So we've got this avenue that we can call upon God to give us reassurance, to know that He is still in control. So then we look at the scope of prayer. How far does prayer reach? What are the limits? Is there is any limits of prayer? To answer these questions, we can look in the Bible. Anyone can pray. Romans 10, 12, and 4, 14. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We can call on him about anything. Mark 12, 11, 24 says, Whatsoever you desire, believe, and you shall have them anywhere. We can pray anywhere. And we can pray any time. Paul said in his letter to the Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. But in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, it says, Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, 
when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. So we pray in faith, knowing that God hears our prayers, and that he's going to answer our prayers. So that's man's side of the prayer. But what's God's side of the prayer? Whenever man responds to God's invitation to call, immediately there is a response on God's part. It is impossible really to pray and, and not have an answer for God says, you call, and as sure as you call, I will answer. What kind of an answer does God give? One thing, he gives a, a certain answer. He says, I will answer. Call unto me, and I will answer. If you go back to 33 and 3, call unto me, and I will answer. We cannot pray and, and fail to get an answer for here's, here's God's guarantee about it. And what a difference it would make if only we could take God at his word and, and believe what he says when we pray. You know, the answer may be direct. Very often we pray and it's like taking a check to the bank and receiving the money before we leave the premises. Isaiah 65 and, and 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. So that's words from God there. He's, even while we're beginning to pray, God is hearing and he, he's already moving on our behalf. You know, the answer may be different than what... Uh, what we had in mind when we pray. It may be different. It will come, but it may be different than what we expected. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 9, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, now this is the answer God gave Paul. He said, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So the answer was different than what Paul had prayed for. He asked God to remove that thorn in his flesh. But God said, my grace is sufficient for you. So the answer may be a little different than what we had in mind. You know, the answer may be not just immediate. It may be delayed a little bit. And many times we kind of lose hope, thinking, well, God is going to, God is, gonna, is God going to answer my prayer? But God is simply saying to us, wait, I'm going to answer your prayer in my time. God is a right on time God. He knows what we need and when we need it. And he will move when he knows that the timing is just right. The answer may be a denial. God may say no. In 1 Kings 19 and 4, you know, it just show, goes to show us what a good thing that it is that God doesn't always answer our prayers the way we want him to. But listen to this. But, the, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. So Elijah was having a pity party. And he had defeated the prophets of Baal. Jezebel was after him. He feared for his life, and he was on the run. And he was tired, and he sat down under that juniper tree, and he prayed to die. But God said, no, I'm not done with you yet. And isn't it good that God knows all about us. And sometimes he may say to us when we pray and ask him for something, God may say no. But God knows what we need, when we need it, 
and he can see the big picture when all, many times we can just see the things around us. And it'll be a personal answer. God will always give us a personal answer. The greatest answer to prayer is God revealing himself to us. Not maybe the enri blessing that we want, but an the fellowship, the enrichment of a, a close walk and, and just fellowship with him. That was illustrated in, in Paul's prayer in 2 Corinthians when he was praying for God to remove that thorn. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. The promise of the sufficiency of his grace. You know, Paul received a far more wonderful uh, promise to his prayer than if God had removed the thorn from his flesh. And just as God's answer to Paul was a, a personal one, so his answer to you and I is a personal one. You know, it could be a visible answer. If you notice in 33 and 3, he said, I will show you, I will tell you. When we pray, God gives us a, a demonstration of his power so that we can say, that is the answer to my prayer. You know, real prayer is like sending arrows off into the sky. And never, it's not like that, not, never seeing them again. Real prayer is making specific, specific requests for the throne of grace and receiving a definite answer. And by that, we're able to say, that is the answer to my prayer. Matthew 6 and 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And we will know that it's God that's answered our prayers. But there would be a mighty answer to it. He said, call to me and I will show you great and unsearchable things, meaning inaccessible things that through our human, humanly speaking, that it, it would be impossible. The Bible is full of, of illustrations of God doing the impossible in answer to prayers of his people. And you know how challenged we should be about these historic evidences and the apparent possibilities of prayer. A great example of that is in Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 through 14. Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites for the children of Israel. He said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Hajon. And the sun stood still, the moon stayed, and the people had avenged themselves upon the enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the word of man, to the voice of man, for the Lord fought for Israel. So who do you know besides God Almighty that could make the sun stand still and the moon stand still? What a powerful God that we serve. And just by one man calling out to him in prayer. There was no day like it before, none like it after. And sometimes it may be an overwhelming answer. Notice the words, things you do not know. They almost suggest that answer to prayer may be, may be even greater than the last answer. God always gives more than we, than we ask or that we can imagine. He'll give above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. 
He will give us from His riches and glory. We do not always see what God is doing behind the scenes. Yet He invites us to call unto Him. He promises to show us great and mighty things. The great and mighty things are His healing, bringing peace and truth, rebuilding, restoring, showing mercy. You know, I believe it won't be long that we'll be able to to gather back as the body of Christ, back into our churches. And I look forward to the day when I can look out here and, and see familiar faces. And I know Pastor does too, when we can see on Sunday morning, when we can come together. Can you imagine what that first Sunday, that when we come back together, is going to be like? Oh, what a time of praise and worship we're going to have. You know, God can do anything He wishes. There are no prayer. Too hard for God to, to answer. No problem too big to solve. No person too lost to save. Let me repeat that. God can do anything he wishes. There's nothing too hard for God. No person too lost to save. No promise too difficult to keep. Nothing out, lies outside the reach of prayer except that which lies outside the will of God. Prayer is your guiding missile. It can be fired from any spot. It travels undetected at the speed of thought. And it hits a target every time. And if you don't see the answer right away, remember it can have a del delayed detonation. Satan has no defense against your prayers. There is no anti-prayer missile. You know, I was just thinking this afternoon as I was going over this, I remember watching TV, you know, they fight wars now on TV, and I believe it was uh, Desert Storm. And these fighter jets were going through, and they were firing these missile, missiles. And one fired at this concrete bunker way off in the distance. And through the TV cameras, you could just see that missile just go, and it just went right through the door of that bunker. And that's the way our prayer is. It's just not haphazard. Luck. It reaches its destination. There's no misfire and there's no misses. It reaches its destination. God promises, call on me and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Things exceedingly abundant above all that we can ask or think. That should just put joy in our hearts. D.L. Moody famous evangelist. He was, fancy, fa he was familiar with hardships. He lost his father when he was quite young, grew up in poverty, worked rather than going to school, lived through the Civil War and Chicago fire, lost grandchildren, survived a shipwreck, worked with the urban poor. Moody experiences life's challenges personally as well as wading into the difficulties that, that others was facing, despite or perhaps because of the challenges he faced, he continued to see God in the midst of trial. And Moody once wrote, I am so thankful that I have a joy that the world cannot rob me of. I have a treasure that the world cannot take from me. I have something that is not in the power of man or the devil to deprive me of. And that is the joy of the Lord. Joy comes from our belief that no matter what is happening, God is shaping us more completely into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. Call on me, and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. What an awesome reminder of the power that we have in our prayer, knowing that God hears and answers our prayers. Even as we begin to speak our prayer, God is listening, he's hearing, he's already working on it. God is already working through this situation of this COVID-19 virus, and we'll get through it. And it won't be long till we be gathered back together worshiping as the body of Christ, as the family of God. May God add his blessings to these words. Let's pray. 
Father, we, God, I just thank you for the reminder that, that we serve a God that's, that's give us his telephone number. And he said, call unto me, and I will answer. How comforting that is, just as a reminder that, God, our prayers is just not words, it's just lost in space. But God, you even keep the prayers of the saints in a vial, and they're a sweet aroma to you. So I thank you for this avenue of prayer that we have knowing, God, that you're working through this situation. So I pray your blessing upon each family that's tuned in tonight. Father, even the ones that may come on later and just click on this website and and watch the service. I, I just pray a blessing upon them. Father, keep us all safe. And we just thank you for your goodness and mercy. Your grace, your grace is sufficient for us. And God, we thank you for your grace and mercy. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.